Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Media Munchies Podcast. I'm here. It's just me. Gari's in the room. Um, Always am. Yes, because she is my support. Also, I'm the VIP. I guess VIP. See the uncut version. Yes. Raw. Raw <laughs> entertainment. Raw. Raw entertainment. Absolutely. But today it's going to be me. And I'm going to do something very exciting today. It's going to be a review of an album that came out exactly a year ago from when I'm uploading this, of course. Fine Line by Harry Styles. And I'm very excited because as everyone who knows this podcast knows, like even if you've only gone through it on the Spotify page, you know, I am a huge 1D fan. I reviewed Niall's album as well. I talked about 1D with Nate. And now I'm back to review Fine Line by Harry Styles. Can I just say what an album? What an album. I like it a lot, first of all, straight up. Getting to the point here, and just so you know, this is like a biased like fan review of the thing. It's not like I'm like you know. (laughs) But like, to be honest, music is subjective and every review is kind of like that. Like, we all have different opinions. So nobody is perfect. Nobody is completely objective, as Nietzsche says. (laughs) (laughs) I know, I'm sorry, I'm pretentious. But okay, we everything is a different perspective. And we're just living life. This is also like a stoner lesson, kind of. (laughs) But anyways, yeah, I love this album, so this is mostly going to be me uh, raving about it, but also there will be some points of me genuinely criticizing it. But yeah, this is going to be fun. I've got some specific things to do per song, because I'm going to go through each song. So I'm going to go through each song, and then uh, for each song, I'm going to do some things like... A lyric highlight slash low light. So basically a lyric that really stands out to me. And I'm, I've am i got the uh, genius lyrics page up. Uh, not sponsored. <laughs> Sorry, that was weird. But I'm going to say a lyric that stands out either in a good way or a bad way per song. And I'm going to say uh, where the song is in my top songs 2020 on Spotify because that happened and a lot of songs from Fine Line are up on my Spotify uh, 2020 list Uh, so I'm gonna say like the position and what it says about me like the reason I think because it's got some interesting placements to be honest because they're they're not in like order of which song is my favorite which I found kind of interesting so we're gonna go through that we're also just gonna talk about the song and what I think of it and I'm gonna oh no I haven't even come up with ratings uh this podcast is kind of unprepared but I think I could come up with ratings on the fly (laughs) hopefully so we're gonna try that out see how it goes now let's get into it and start with our first song which is golden (laughs) now Golden. I'm already losing my mind because Golden as an album opener blow like <laughs> blew me <laughs> fuck. <laughs> you were speechless. Yeah, literally, um basically I'm speechless at Golden because Golden is like the vibe. The vibe of Golden just just like embrace the vibe of Golden one day you know feel the vibes (laughs) okay i have not said anything of value okay golden i really like because of the vibe obviously and the lyrics and just like the powerful like emotion that you feel to it like i really feel like i can get in and emotionally experience this song just because of the vibe as i said And I want to um, go into this and give a lyric highlight. Just like all of it. All of it, first of all. All the lyrics are great. But my favorite lyric, personally, is the part where he's like, it says the bridge here. So he's saying golden a bunch of times. And then it kind of, like the music, like, it, (laughs) it gets 
a bit more quiet and like sort of stops and then he says I know that you're scared because I'm so open and that like that's the first time the lyric was said because it's like know that you're scared because hearts get broken in the earlier verses and it's like whoa that moment is like oh it's the drop it's the like where it all you know absolutely chef's kiss so literally that moment is everything and golden it's definitely in my top three it's not my favorite song on the album but it's in my top three and it's also in my top three because it's number three on my top songs 2020 and this is kind of I don't know it surprised me because I was like oh my god I didn't expect it but I think it comes from the fact that (laughs) I don't want to say the vibe again but it's just it's both happy and sad and I can appreciate it when I'm in both moods kind of so I think that's why I could just I could just listen to it at any time and it apparently I listen to it at every time (laughs) so like a lot (laughs) because it was number three and yeah that's golden I think I would give it a nine yeah I'd give it a nine because I have zero complaints about that song I don't know why I'm not giving it a ten but Like, it took a while to grow on me, I guess, so, and to grow to, like, this level of love, so I guess that's why it's not a 10, because I'm reserving the 10 for my favorite song. So next, the next song is Watermelon Sugar. Okay, (laughs) I don't mean to get controversial here, but Watermelon Sugar, I know it's a fan favorite, but it's not my favorite song of all time. Gari is very mad at me, and... I think that's valid and understandable. Like, I did definitely enjoy it, and I found a newfound appreciation for it listening this summer with Gari because, like... Can I just say something? Yeah, well, you have to come up here. <laughs> Logan's being a hatty snob. If you don't know what that means, that means when people <laughs> expect so much perfection out of their favorite artist that hey, they don't no, recognize no, 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 that no, 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 a no. freaking hit is a hit. Yeah, okay, okay. Watermen and Sugar is literally the best, best song on the album. Shoot me. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not sorry. Because, to be honest, I just... I feel it, I love it, and I think you love it especially, and it holds a special place for you, but like... Yeah, because it's a summer song. Like, the best (laughs) things about summer, when you don't have to worry about school, is when you can get watermelon sugar high. Oh my god, that's so true. It is a summer song, Yeah, and you love summer, how could you betray the season? I know, I know. I totally valid concerns. It's just, let me just speak about it for a second. I don't know. I like the instrumentals. I just think they're kind of basic. I like when they come in at the end with the boom, boom, with the, like the brass instruments. I think that's very great. Um, I just wish it had picked up a bit more in the beginning. I don't know. It's just got a slow start for me and I, I don't have too much to say. I don't hate it. Like I still love it. I love the summer vibes and I love... I don't know, the upbeat, happy, like, it's nice, it's nice. It's just not my favorite song on the album. And I'm just gonna say, uh, a lyric highlight, I think, but this also has to do with the music video, (laughs) because I've seen so many posts about it. Um, I like the lyric, tastes like strawberries, because somebody pointed out that in the music video, when he says that, there's like watermelon in the frame, so it's like, Harold, that doesn't taste like strawberries. That's actually um, watermelon, bro. (laughs) But, like, it's just kind of funny. So, the next thing is where it is in my top songs 2020. It's actually pretty high up. It's my fifth highest song on the list, and it's number 23. And I think that's pretty good. And it, it, all it says about me is that I listened to it a lot this summer because it was our jam. We vibed to it. And I think... I don't know. I'm gonna give it a, um, (laughs) I'm gonna give it a, Gar's gonna kill me. She's seriously gonna kill me. (laughs) Okay, no, I can't let, I have to, like, give my raw opinion because I believe in authenticity. Okay. it's our memories. I know, it's our memories. You're right, you're right, you're right. So because of that, I'm gonna give it a seven. 
She's still not happy with me, but it's like I, I can't. I was hoping you give me an A. Okay, it's I'm sorry. Basically, like you're rating me. Okay, right I'm not. <laughs> you can't no, take it so personally. There is no difference between the song and me. Okay, it no. <laughs> I have to give it a 7 just because of song quality. If I was rating this based on like my memories with the song, it would be different. However, I'm trying to keep this review a little bit less biased and just say like my true raw opinions of the songs without any other like factors. But you're right. If I was counting the memories, it would be a 10 because it's like a 10 out of 10 memory. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, moving on. The next song we have, Adore You. Now, <laughs> no comment. <laughs> no comment. I do have to comment, though. So, uh, this song is really good. <laughs> this song is seriously one of the best songs on the album, and I would also say top three. And I love the music video. I love his fish character. I love every lyric, if I am being honest. I, I like the chorus. I'm not gonna, <laughs> you know... Sorry that I'm not... I, I, I like um Walk in Your Rainbow Paradise because it's very gay. And, you know... Yeah, that's good enough. I, I like every lyric. I like every lyric. Uh, the reason I'm being so hesitant about this is just because I cannot listen to this song anymore. <laughs> because it makes me really sad. And I know this is being very upfront and honest, but I just straight up cannot listen to this song anymore. And I don't want to get personal. And that's why it's not on my top songs 2020 because this song it's literally one of the best on the album it's one of my favorites i would straight up give it a nine did i give golden a nine yeah so this one i would also give a nine because it's such a good song the vibes are so good i literally love the vibe of this song this the vibe could not be any more sweet and perfect and cute and adorable it <laughs> it just makes me sad at this point so but yeah, this song gets a 9. It's perfect and great. And it's not on my top songs 2020, which, honestly, sad. I should have listened to it more. Regrets. Regrets of the year. Moving on now to Lights Up. Oh my god, okay. Lights Up. It, it's interesting because it's one that grew on me because when I first heard it, I was like, yeah, this is good. I don't know exactly what he's trying to go for for the lyrics. They're kind of obscure. But then I saw theories of people online being like, it's like lights up the the spotlight <laughs> or whatever and it's like he's coming out he's stepping into the light and I was like oh my god I get it and I guess that's my favorite lyric when he he says oh I like the lyric lights up and they know who you are know who you are do you know who you are and I'm like damn bro damn really hit him with these coming out vibes and I like the vibe of this one too because it's kind of mysterious but it's kind of also like upbeat and like shining because it's like lights up you know and yeah this one definitely grew on me I think I'm going to give it an eight just for the coming out vibes okay so yeah and in my uh top songs 2020 it was number 27 which was right below watermelon sugar and I think that makes sense like with the singles they aren't like I kind of want to give it a 7.5 now. I kind of changed my mind. I don't know. The singles, except for Adore You, sometimes they just, they feel a bit, like, surface level and, like, over, not overplayed, but just, like, I don't know. They just don't reach me. This sounds so pretentious, but, like, it's just sometimes, like, I feel like it's, like, <laughs> an imprint from the 1D singles because a lot of 1D singles I just they never really struck me in the same way you know like uh drag me down perfect like they're good but they they don't like hit on that level except for kiss you kiss you is a like really good 1D single I like live while we're young it's decent anyways moving on with this but like yeah 7.5 for lights up so the next song, oh no, the next song is Cherry, which, interesting story, I don't really like Cherry, just because, like, I just don't like the lyrics. I straight up don't like the lyrics, because it's got this, like, weird narrative, and I, I like the simple guitar, but I feel like he's trying too hard to be, like, Sufjan Stevens, and it's, like, only Sufjan Stevens can do Sufjan Stevens, but, like, just specifically, what what's that album called? Oh, Carrie and Lowell, and... 
the song Mystery of Love as well, which are very, very good. And I, I think with the guitar bit, I think he was trying to go for something like that, but a bit more simple. And I think, I think he did a good job on that. Like, definitely not on the Sufjan Stevens level, but it was kind of like a nice little vibe. Now, the lyrics are just all over the place for me. Um, I like the chorus because reasons. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not going to say it. And I like, I like some of them. It's just some of them are just so cringe to me. I like the first verse. I confess, I can tell that you are your, at your best. I'm selfish, so I'm hating it. Great. Wonderful. Then... I just miss your accent and your friends. Do you know I still talk to them? It's just like, what are you... I don't, like... I get that he's trying to be all personal and relatable. It's just like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? And does he take you walking around his parents' gallery? It's like, too specific, and I I just don't like the vibe. I don't know. Maybe this is my own problem. It just feels too forced to me and it does not feel authentic and that honestly takes down the rating of the song quite a bit because at first I liked it but then I was like it just gets on my nerves and you know what else I hate about this song y'all can guess what I hate it's called the cuckoo part why <laughs> it does not sound nice and I don't I'm not saying this because I hate Camille Rowe or whatever I don't know her I'm sure she's nice and she's great. I just don't know why the section is in here. I don't know why it's in... Fr like, it's nice that it's in French, whatever. If you want to do a voicemail, I just feel like that's... It's just too much. It's overdone. And this one sounded, like, creepy and weird. So, oh, and by the way, <laughs> those were the lyric low lights <laughs> Because, you know, it's number 55 on my top song 2020 and that makes me mad but like there was a point where I would listen to it on repeat and so I think it's because of that and it's above she which I think is really uh rude <laughs> and it shouldn't be because I listened to she the other day and it's so good but we'll get to that when we get to that song anyways falling now <laughs> let's talk about falling for a second <laughs> Gari's gonna get mad at me again because I don't really like falling and yeah I'm not the hugest fan of falling because I don't hate piano ballads I just I'm picky about the ones that I like because sometimes I don't like to listen to sad songs and I want my sad songs to be good and I I will admit that I'm picky however some of the lyrics in falling I don't vibe I really, I don't vibe with them. The first one being just the opening of it. I'm in my bed and you're not here. And it's like, did you have to go so simple with that? And I don't mind it. It's just that later on, he adds so much more complexity onto it. So it's like, oh, you're trying to do so much at once. You're trying to go simple. You're trying to go complex. The thing is like, it's so general. And then he goes so specific, right? So as in, the coffee's out at the Beechwood Cafe. It's like, okay, now you're name dropping the Beechwood Cafe. And now you're trying to add some cheating storyline. I don't get it. There's no one to blame in the drink, but the drink in my wandering hands. Like, what is this song about? This song is about like self-hate, but it's also about like, and I, I interpret the song about like general, like, you know, feeling like you're not enough. To be honest, here's what I love about this song it's the chorus. What if I'm someone I don't want around? That hits. That straight up hits deep. And when I first heard the song, I was like, damn, this is the saddest song ever. But then eventually just the, the cringe lyrics came to ruin it for me. Not ruin it. Okay. I, <laughs> I'm being really dramatic about these. I don't hate any of the songs. It's just certain things annoy me a bit. So I rant on and on about them. And it's, it seems like I'm seriously annoyed about it but I'm not. Okay, I'm gonna calm down a bit. <laughs> I'm gonna calm down a bit and say like, I like the chorus and I like the bridge. I get the feeling that you'll never need me again. Like, whoa. That was like a bit of a mic drop moment and I like how it's just that line for the bridge and just like then empty noise. It's kind of nice. However, unfortunately, I just don't like the narrative and I don't like it's just too confused. There's too much going on. 
and it's like the song trying to be simple but it's also trying to be complex so it just it's a bit of a mess and as someone famously put on tumblr you know the line in um to be so lonely where he says don't blame me for falling (laughs) he was talking about this song he said don't blame me for falling i didn't give a rating to cherry did i oh six (laughs) straight up six and falling i might give (gasps) 5.5 yeah Gary's not happy with it, but for falling, I give 5.5. I'm actually not that attached. Okay, that's and I fine. I see your point, but I do love piano ballads. So okay, me... and that's fair. That's fair. Oh, and falling was not on my top songs 2020, which makes sense. <laughs> like, I was sad, but I wasn't that sad where I needed to listen to this one on repeat because <laughs> it's not worth it. It's not worth the lessons on repeat because you eventually just realize that it's not (laughs) it's not the best song ever this is so harsh i'm so sorry i know i just realized like amy likes this song i think yeah gary likes this song i don't hate it i don't hate any of these songs i'm just trying to be a bit harsh on my boy harold before i go ham and start giving him tens across the board so (laughs) coming up to be so lonely now to be so lonely is kind of an interesting one for me because it's another one that makes me sad but for different reasons because it's kind of got this like this vibe that I don't really like I I see the character that he's creating (laughs) but it kind of makes me sad this character because it's like this bitter like breakup vibe and it's sad (laughs) I'm not gonna like comment my own personal experience but it's sad (laughs) So I like the the lyrics, every lyrics, basically, because it, it really creates this character who's like a bitch ass, who's like this, <laughs> this like <laughs> really, really like arrogant dude. And homie's like, I'm just an arrogant son of a bitch who can't admit when he's sorry. And it's like self-aware. I don't know. I, I like when people create like mean characters who are also self-aware. It it's really, it feels like a really human thing, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, because of that, I really like this song, even though it kind of makes me sad sometimes. But I would still give it like an eight, <laughs> straight up. And it was honestly my number seven on my top songs 2020. And it's one that originally stood out to me a lot. And then it made me sad later on. And then I kind of learn to appreciate it again because it's seriously a really good song and it's my second like out of the fine line songs it's my second fine line song on my top song 2020 after golden and it's at number seven because i really like it and yeah i really like what they do with the instruments and the guitar line that they have in there and just overall it's very creative oh i like the when they have the match and then they blow it out between the verse and the chorus <laughs> so yeah I give it an eight really good song and we're moving on to the next one so the next song is she now she is such a good song and it's really underrated and I think the reason I didn't listen to it so much is because okay I love the guitar solo on another level But sometimes I'm not in the mood to listen to the full thing. But when I really get into it and listen to the full thing, it's the most amazing, beautiful thing ever. And it's such a good song to listen to while high. Let me just straight up say. Lyrics wise, I just want to say this song is really good. And I like how people have said that it's uh, about gender because I think it's a really good interpretation of it. Just the whole thing, she lives in daydreams with me, all of that. And personally, I don't mean to delve into these things and like assume somebody's identifying any sort of way, but I like the interpretation. Just this, the same vibe that it's not about love, but it's kind of about some sort of internal feeling. And I like the line, he takes a boat out, imagines just sailing away. I don't know. I just, I think it really adds something to the vibe of it. And I think the highlight of the song is 
both the I don't know the the instrumentals and the guitar solo and the vibe again it's kind of like golden it's the vibe so it's number 66 on my top songs 2020 and it's like the last song from fine line that's on there which is kind of too bad and I think again it's because what I said sometimes I'm not in the mood to fully listen to the whole thing but when I do get into listening to it it's really good and that's why I'm giving it an eight straight up because I really like it the next song oh my god the next song is sunflower volume six let me just tell you straight up this song is my favorite and it is probably one of my all-time favorite songs of all time like seriously it's such a good song I don't have anything bad to say about this song. I don't know. It kind of, the vibe that it gives me is a Vampire Weekend song because it it has that like doom, 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 like that little like, (laughs) I remember one time my mom pointed it out, like the ding, ding, like how Vampire Weekends have, Vampire Weekends, Vampire Weekend songs have kind of similar noises. (laughs) It's kind of weird. A lot of like, I literally don't know what it's called. It's like, like chimes. Like imagine like a ding, like, (laughs) sorry, I'm so stupid. And the thing is about this song, it has the same stuff. And it was funny because when I saw the name Sunflower, I was like, haha, Sunflower, like the Vampire Weekend song. And then I listened to it and I was like, this, oh, this does sound like Vampire Weekend. And it's such a good combination of vibes. Like I would have never thought that those sounds like Vampire Weekend vibes and Harry Styles would go good together, but he does it so well, and I love everything about it, seriously. I love the lyrics as well. Oh, God. (laughs) Just every part, kiss in the kitchen like it's a dance floor, like, come on. He wrote this for the gays. All of this. I don't want to make you feel bad, but I've been trying hard not to talk to you. Like, every vibe in this is so cute, and I feel like it's about falling in love you know and not to say it but Louis <laughs> and all that so personally I would give the song a 10 straight up straight up 10 I don't know what else I have to say about it unfortunately it's not the highest song in my um top songs 2020 it's actually 19th it's actually after Canyon Moon and some other ones which we'll talk about in a second and it's kind of surprising because it is my favorite song but I guess like I'm not sure why it's not my number one I think it's just because at the same time it is kind of like adore you where it's that vibe but other than that I have nothing bad to say about this song gets a 10 absolutely best song on the album and one of my favorite songs of all time so the next song is Canyon Moon And I just want to say this song pops the hell off. The vibe of this, okay, I know I said the vibe like 20,000 times, but Canyon Moon truly has a vibe. And the vibe is like road trip. The vibe is like scenery. Well, because it's called Canyon Moon. Sorry, I don't mean to sound like some hipster here, but come on. I really like it. And it gives me really positive vibes. I like the lyrics as well carry the feeling through Paris all through Rome and then I like I'm going home obviously just because it's like it just gives me the vibe of like driving on this long like countryside highway and it's like you're driving home and it's like getting dark or something (laughs) and the moon is gonna be out sorry (laughs) I just wanted to give a good uh visual description but anyways I like Canyon Moon a lot and that's why it was number 15 on my top songs 2020 And I would totally give it an 8 because I love it. And it's probably in my top 5. The next song is Treat People With Kindness. And this song is sort of kind of controversial because people are like, Harry, why did you do this? It's kind of lame. It's kind of cheesy. And I'm like, "Mm, okay, I see where you're coming from. But at the same time, for me... It's just so fun and I have such a fun time listening to it and it makes me think, oh my god, I wish I was at a Harry Styles concert because he wrote it for his fans. He wrote it because he loves performing and, you know, having a good time and 
I honestly love that. So yeah, I think this song in general is not meant to be taken super seriously and like as like the serious, wow, it's like serious art and analyzed like, woo, but it still has value and I still love it so much because it's just such a good fun vibe. I would give it a seven. Oh wait, okay, but I need to give like a lyric highlight which I like, I just keep on dancing. It's so cute. Like, he does just keep on dancing. And a lyric, huh? A lyric like, hmm? (laughs) You know, is, if our friends all pass away, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. And it's like, what? What are you talking about? If our friends all pass away, it's okay? Like, I don't think that's okay. I, I just don't know what he's talking about there. I'm just not entirely sure. And not even genius will tell me. Okay, so I don't know what he's saying there, but it's okay. Because <laughs> I like the song, I would give it a seven. And in um, my top songs 2020, it's number three. Like it's the third, no, not number three, but it, like it's the third Fine Line song on there, which is really surprising. But I think it's because I listened to it a lot when I was sad to like cheer me up and like get me happy and it honestly works honestly it makes me feel more positive I don't care what y'all say about it it's good I would give it a seven just because like I don't know I like it but I don't like love it I don't exactly know what my complaints are I don't know there's nothing that stands out super super well but like I still love it so it's not gonna get like a low score you know what I'm saying oh god now (laughs) the final song fine line Can I just say, it's really good, but also really sad. I really like the simplicity, and I think this is how you do a simple yet a bit complex slow song, and I think Falling, if Falling had been a bit more like Fine Line, I think I would have got it, but I think it just tried to put a too specific narrative on it. But Fine Line, I really like the narrative in it, and just the raw feeling, because I don't know, all of it. Put a price on emotion, I'm looking for something to buy, I think is one of my favorite lyrics. And it just talks so emotionally and then will be a fine line is such a good chorus to have. And when he, how he repeats it, I think it's really good. I would straight up give this song, see the the problem is I don't like it as much as To Be So Lonely, Canyon Moon, which I gave eights, but I do like it a little bit more than treat people with kindness so I think I'm straight up gonna give it a 7.5 I love it but it's not like my favorite song in the world and that's just for similar reasons to treat people with kindness it's just it doesn't like completely uh stand out to me basically in terms of my Spotify top songs 2020 it is number 42 and it's just above it's below lights up and then above cherry and she and yeah, I think that's suited. I think I listened to it a bunch because I, w- <laughs> I used it for an AMV, <laughs> which is an anime music video for those who might not know. And as a treat for getting to the end of this podcast, you get to know that I make these for Evangelion. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and they're, they're good, to be honest. If you want to listen, to, if you want to watch these, um, hit me up. I'll send you the link. Because, to be honest, I'm proud of my AMVs. I think the fine line one, I will post soon. (laughs) But anyways, speaking of fine line, did I give a lyric highlight? Yeah, I did. And 7.5. Um, I don't have an overall rating for the album. Okay, I could give it an overall rating. Um, but I don't want to, like, be too obsessed and give it a (laughs) 9. What would you say? That was a 10. Are you kidding me? Would you say this album's a 10? I noticed something today that is so crazy about Harold. All of his new songs on Spotify, like all of his top songs, top played songs are from... Fine Line. Fine Line. There's barely, (laughs) there's barely any of the old ones. Hey. And I'm not saying this is a bad thing, because it's not, like... Because I love the old ones, to be honest. The old ones are so nice. His first album, really good. But for, for this to be such a hit in such a big way. Yeah. That's every song. It's so hard to pick this album. the thing is, it just has a lot of songs that are He's a little pretentious. 
<laughs> I'm kind of like living for it right now. I kind of want to add up all my scores for each song and see if it gives me an average. So I'm going to do that for like two seconds. Okay, so I added all the scores up and I got an average and the average would be 7.7. .7, and I feel like that's just so not fair to this wonderful album. I would give it more than an 8. Like I would give it an 8.5. I don't know. It's just the overall album just doesn't give me 7.7 .7 vibes. That's like getting a 77 on a project that you worked really hard on. <laughs> Sorry. But I was going to give this album a 9 and I straight up, I think I, I should because <laughs> I like the album that much. I don't know what else to say. Yeah. Sorry. Anthony Fantano who gave this album a 5. A 5! Okay, sorry, still makes me mad. I thought I'd forgotten about it until now, actually. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm straight up gonna give this album a 9. I'm not even sorry. I would give it a 10, but, like, I don't know. I just feel like a 10... Will I ever find a 10 album? Who knows? But I will review it on here on Media Munchies. So, <laughs> this is a good place to end it, basically. I love Fine Line. Harry Styles, great job. I think he's a legend. And... Good for him for creating this amazing album. I will treasure it, especially Sunflower Volume 6, because it's such a good song. And then all the rest of them, too. I recommend listening to She While High and also Golden While High, because those are the real vibe ones. And yeah, so thank you for tuning in this week. <laughs> thank you for listening. I'll hopefully have another Hannibal episode up soon because I'm kind of working on it a bit and I love Hannibal. I hope everyone enjoyed this episode. This has been Logan. And Gauri. Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. 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 So we'll have an episode together soon. I promise. I promise. Ooh, We're, we have plans. We have plans. We have such big plans. Yeah. So yeah, this has been us. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next time on Media Munchies Podcast. Also, I really hope you have fun because this is really, 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 really fun to be a part of. Aw, I love you. Thank you. I had a great time. Legend. Peace. High five. Woo! <laughs> Harry Styles. Yas. <laughs>